Hi guys, so I wanted to show you real quick how to use Q properties. And I made a small app that will show us a few properties. But in general, the idea is here we will have an image of an actor. The number of stars will show the rating of the actor. Here is his name and last name and the best movie he has. If you go forward, we'll have a list of actors. And if you click on one of these items, the actor will be shown on the right side. So let's get into the code. You shouldn't worry too much about the elements I added. For example, the gradient stop and stuff like that. The main thing here to look at is the single instance example. And the list example. First of all, we're going to connect values to the single instance example. The main thing to look at is this. So all the values that I provided here according to the name will be displayed on the app. The main idea is to have an object on the C++ side, export it to QML and put it here in this variable actor. Now I will show you the class I created for the actors. As you can see, I made a simple class with some private variables and for now I don't even have getters and setters, only the constructor. The idea is that the name, last name, best movie and rating can't be changed, only the image URL. In this way I can show you how to export a constant Q property and a changeable Q property. As you can see, all these values correlate to the value values I provided on the QML side. Now the only thing we have to do is connect them. For now, if I launch my example, the name and the last name correlate to these two values. Rating is one star and no movie is being shown. So let's create our Q properties and connect them. Now if I go into my actor class, if I right click on my variable go refactor there's already a way to generate the queue property and it's missing members if the value is a constant we'll generate the queue property that only has the read attribute that is basically a read only value but if i generate this queue string that is mutable and generate a queue property and it's missing members we'll create a getter it will create a setter and it will create a signal signal image url change needs to be the same as the notify name also when we're setting the image and if the image is actually a new image we are setting Setting and then calling the image URL change. What the change signals do is emit the signal to notify the QML side that something in the values has changed and it should re-render its screen. If we would set the set image URL without the QEmit, when we would set the image URL, it wouldn't change on the QML side, so we destroyed that screen and put it back on. So let me generate the rest of the values. By the way, what's really important is that you know what these names mean. So if I go back into my QML, the first name that is shown up here will be the name that will be called from the QML side. So in my situation, if I wanted to call name, I would call it actor.name. These values can be named whatever you want. I could name it anything. And if I wanted to get the name, I would call actor.anything. But let's make it so it makes sense. The read value is the name of the getter. In my case, it's name. If I would make my getter and call it get name it would show us an error and i can show it right away let me just change it on cpp side name is not a member of actor basically what it's saying is looking for a getter that's called name but it's not finding so if i change it back to name the code is getting through don't mind this error for now the same can be said for the setter the right property is connected to the setter and the notify property is connected to the signal now with all that said let's create our first actor i'm going to create another class that's going to be called actor manager Okay, we have our basic object class. And from what I'm gonna add here, private variable, I just need to include actor. And it's gonna be an actor pointer, and I'm gonna call it single instance actor because we're gonna use it in our first example and we're gonna instantiate that actor right away in our constructor. Now our actor needs to take in few values and I'm gonna take Morgan Freeman for the example. The name is Morgan Freeman, last name, the best movie, Gawshank Redemption, and rating, let's give him five stars. Also, I'm gonna give him an image URL and the parent is this. So now we have our actor manager and inside of it, we have our actor. The way we're gonna expose the actor to the QML side is through our main. In our main, I'm gonna include the actor manager. In order to export it, we need to call the engine, root context, and set a context property. Now you need to give the name of the context property. It can be anything you want, it just needs to be unique. So I'm gonna call it actor manager. And as the second argument, you are providing the instance of the object you want to export. In my case, actor manager. Now it's showing an error because it's missing an include. And what you need to include is QQML context. Now it's fine. Now the way I would access the actor manager here would be just actor manager. If I launch my application and console log the actor manager, this situation actor, it printed out the actor manager and the memory address. So as you already know, in our actor manager, we have the actor, but this single instance actor isn't available on the QML side. So what we need to do is use our queue properties. And like we did before, I'm gonna refactor it. And I'm gonna generate a constant queue property because we're not gonna change this actor. So we have our name and the getter. And it's gonna 
gonna be a constant. So the way we're gonna access this actor is actor manager, this name. Okay, now that we have our actor, let's connect all the properties that we defined. So name would be actor name, actor last name, actor best movie, rating, actor image URL. Now we have all the information from our actor. By the way, if you're not getting the image and you're getting an error that says something like OpenSSL not working, please check out this video on how to fix it. I'm going to link it to the top. Okay, so I showed you now how to read values. Let me show you how to change values. I made this little button that if you click it, you can change the URL. So here we need to provide the URL. And when we press confirm, the URL needs to be changed the way that we call the setter of set image URL. So what I already did is in our pop-up where we have the Function that's going to change the URL through the property that I defined here actor I propagated the actor that we already have here so that this component has access to the actor that we're using now when enter is pressed or the button is clicked we're going to call a function that's called confirm URL here I covered just an edge case if the URL is not valid we are exiting the function here goes the rest of our function I'm just going to comment setting new URL so all you have to do here as you already know you have the actor here but to be precise I'm going to give it an ID all you have to do is get the actor, get the image URL, and set it to the new URL. In our case, we're getting the text field, we're getting the text from the text field. Now, if I launch our app, we have Morgan Freeman. If I take another image from Morgan Freeman, paste it here, press confirm. Okay, I realized that here onClick hasn't been implemented. So onClicked, we're calling our function confirm URL. Now, if I launch it, change the image URL, press confirm, change the image. Okay, that's it from our single perspective. Let's go forward and use this component in another way. And also I'm gonna show you how to use a list. So if we go back to our actor manager, now we need a list of actors. So I'm gonna create a queue list and have pointers to actors that we're gonna define. I'm gonna call it actors. This will be a mutable list. So I'm gonna create just a queue property and it's missing members. We're not gonna need set actors. So I'm gonna remove this, but I'm gonna keep actors change. So if you would append an actor or remove an actor, you would still need this signal. In this example, I'm not gonna show that. So in our constructor, I'm gonna define a few more actors and yes we changed the list but since we are calling it from the constructor in this scenario we don't have to call actors changed okay now we have our actors let me open our list example and here instead of the model we're going to call actor manager actors and here instead of the placeholder text we're going to say user list model the index of this delegate that would be the actor and we're going to say name plus last name that should show us the list of our actors okay nice now the only thing left is when i click one of these i would like to show it on this side so here on click here i'm going to give it an id so i can access it from here we're going to say single instance actor is our user list model index that way we're going to provide it with a new actor if you remember if you go inside of this getting an actor the default value would be the single instance actor that we created already but if you give it a new actor here it will override it and change to the new values now if i launch it and if we go to our list if i click one of the actors it will change to the new actor Please don't mind that I gave some of them three stars, two stars. In my opinion, everybody deserves five stars from this list. But I just wanted to show you how it will look like with different ratings. Also this, if I change the image here also and provide it with the new image, it will change to that image and only for that actor. Thank you for watching this example and see you in the next one.